Okay, we're looking at a uh, Zenith 6G801 universal portable radio. Uh, this radio was made in uh, 1949, and I think it uh, was in production for maybe a year or so. It was initially the uh, companion radio when it's in the black and silver color uh, rather than the... Uh, brown and tan that you see here. Uh, companion radio for the uh, G500 transoceanic radio. Uh, this is a real Rube Goldberg contraption of a radio because when you push this button right here these doors fly open, the wave magnet pops up and the radio begins to play. And it was designed that way so that when you close these doors, the radio automatically shuts off and you won't run down your battery. Uh, many times with these early portables, people would forget to turn them off or they would think that they were off and they weren't. And then you would have a very expensive battery that would run down in a very short time. Um, this radio, when I got it, uh, did not work at all. This the, the left door is the only one that would come open. The wave magnet didn't come up at all and of course I didn't know whether it played at that time. So uh, it's been restored. The chassis has been recapped, new resistors, uh, I mean uh, new capacitors and uh, whatever resistors needed to be replaced. And uh, I think it might have needed a uh, output tube and uh, then I repainted the chassis. It was pretty beat up and I had to do some body work on it. There were some cracks. Uh, this was broken. I flipped it over so this is the bottom side that was not as uh, beat up as the top side and glued the uh, broken piece in the back. So what we want to do now is look at uh, some of the repairs I had to do to get this thing to work like it's supposed to. And... Uh, We'll uh, take a look and see how it works when you push that button. Okay, here's a peek inside the uh, back of the radio. Uh, right up here is that button, and when you push this button, as you can see, this little lever right here comes up, and uh, it trips a lever back here. We'll, we'll look at it in just a second. And it also releases the front door, so they pop open. Uh, and when this little uh, lever here uh, trips this and the wave magnet pops up uh, and it also releases a uh, there's a slide switch right here that's spring pressure holds it open when the doors are closed it pushes against the spring turns the radio off when the pressure is released the spring goes back to the on position okay this is the the little cam that lifts up and releases this wave magnet when you push the uh, lever that I showed you before. What makes this all work is this spring right here. It's a two-legged spring and the reason that didn't work when I got the radio was that the uh, spring had been bent out of shape and I tried to reshape it as good as I could but I and I got it to where it would push the wave magnet up, but then it would jump out from behind this black cover here, and you couldn't push the wave magnet back down. The way that I ended up fixing that was I put this large silver washer that you see here uh, over the fulcrum of the spring, and then I had to make this little filler piece right here and glue it in. This used to come up uh, higher right there, right almost to the bottom of that little spot right there. This keeps it from jumping out and it stays in its track so that now we can retract the wave magnet. And now it's loaded and when this little cam here is pushed, it's going to fly up or out of its uh, holder there. 
Uh, it's actually designed so that you can also release the wave magnet entirely, take it out of the cabinet, attach these suction cups to the wave magnet and put it on a window uh, if you were traveling in a bus or a train or you were in a steel building to improve your reception. Uh, very similar to an arrangement that you see in the transoceanics as well. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put a battery in here. This is a battery I made with an old uh, Sears Silvertone battery box. I had to put a different connector in it so it would mate up with this. It's got 10 9 volt cells that produce 90 volts for the uh, plate current on the tubes and it's got um, six C cells that produce nine volts for the uh, tube filaments. So what we're going to do is uh, install that battery then we'll close it up and we'll see if it all works like it's supposed to. Okay we've got our uh, battery installed now and uh, before I close it up uh, these little tabs right here were broken off and so the back wouldn't stay close so I had to make these tabs out of um, styrene plastic and then uh, glued them in place and then put on a pretty good heavy layer of JB weld to give it added strength so that they're they're pretty strong now so that the back will stay closed uh, when we shut it up. Okay, let me uh, reposition the camera here so we can get a good action shot. Okay, I think we're all ready to go. Now what should happen when I push this button is these doors should fly open, wave magnet comes up, and the radio should begin playing. Yeah, Rube Goldberg would have been very proud of Zenith. This is a very nice radio. It's uh, pretty... Uh, yeah, we're getting Sirius XM. That's pretty good radio, isn't it? That's actually coming through a uh, Talking House AM transmitter. Today's moment with Charles Stanley is coming up. Dr. Charles Stanley. I shouldn't die. I can't believe you're getting into it. I don't, I don't like the 28 point spread thing. They're trying to jinx him and make them do a trip up in a game that. Opinion on his neck injury could be a multi week affair. Maybe somebody who gets car insurance at 20, 25 years old will get one race. bill this month? Oh, I sure did. It's ridiculous. I wish there was a way to cut it down. This radio picks up a lot more AM stations than some of my uh, other radios. Very, very nice radio. All right, so uh, now when we close these doors, it should shut off. And there it is. And of course, we have to push that antenna back down. And we're ready to head off to the beach or wherever we want to go and listen to our portable radio.